Welcome everybody to the Jack Frost Show. This is a show dedicated to the appreciation and preservation of music and sound. On this show, we will cover a wide range of topics which will include music history, popular music, and influences on music. Plus anything else my viewers or I can think of. These shows will showcase a conglomerate of well-known and local talent from all genres of music. I will attempt to interview guests that are involved in every facet of music and its production. If you would like to see something on this show or be a guest on this show, please contact me at jackfrostshow at myspace.com. So let's get started. All right, today's guest, we got my man Stanley Man. What's going on, man? Already, man. All right, all right. So we just gonna get right into it. Tell the people what you do. Well, um, I'm a firefighter with the city of Flint, mm -hmm. and I'm also a spoken word performing artist, mm -hmm. and I travel uh, any place where there's an open mic. Right, okay. So uh, when you say spoken word, uh, exactly what is your format and how, your style of, of spoken word? Uh, my style of spoken word is, um, I call it ghetto poetry, ghetto style, mm -hmm. and um, it's not ghetto in its content. I mean, my delivery is um, more of an urban, de urban delivery, and people tend to say it kind of leans toward rap a little bit, but the, um, the subject matter separates it from the rest. Okay, so when you say it um, reminds, or, or people say it sounds like rap, is it because the instrumentals you use behind your spoken word, is that what makes it sound like that, or, or a different element? I think it's um, the difference in the way I flow poetry mm -hmm. and the way other people that I've seen mm -hmm. perform mm -hmm. flow poetry. My flow is just closer to rap than it is uh, mainstream poetry, that's all. So uh, let's, let's go into the album. What's the name of your new album that you got right now called? My new album is called Cornbread and Barbecue Smoke from Mississippi to Michigan. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one right there. How'd you come up with that topic right there? Well, actually, um, the first song on the album was called Cornbread and Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. And um, I let a few of my friends listen to that song. And it's like, man, this is smoking, this is smoking, you know? And it kind of just, they, they kept telling me that the album was smoking, the song Chocolate Stars and uh, Play Your Position, um, just a bunch of other songs that people really like. Okay. Led them to say that the whole album was smoking. So I hadn't named it yet. And I said, me being country as I am, <laughs> you know, I just ran toward Cornbread and Barbecue Smoke, you know, the first song off the album. and the album being smoking. Because now you, you live now in Michigan, but you're from Mississippi? Right, Picayune, Mississippi, far as you can get to the bottom. Oh, okay. So how, how was it compared living down there? And Did you do music down there or poetry down there? No, nope, no. Nope. Okay. I didn't, I, I didn't start doing poetry until um, I was in the Army for five years. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to the first Gulf War back in 1990. And uh, to occupy my time, mm -hmm. I started writing poetry. Okay. And one day turned into the next, man, and five poems turned into 500. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, I would just go back and read them poems over and over, just read them, you know, because it was like soul food to me. Uh -huh. And before you knew it, I knew those same poems by heart. But I had never let anybody hear them until I came to Flint. Mm -hmm. And um, two of my best friends, um, Dante Breed and Dwayne Gurley, they were in a rap group called 211. Okay. And I was um, trying to get them to let me write them a song. So I pulled a song out of, the, um, out of my book, a poem, and I read it to them. They called in some other guys off the street. They said, come over here, man, listen to this. I, I read it to them again. Actually, I spoke it because I didn't have it on paper. It was in my head. Right. And he was like, man, that's spoken word, and your voice is unique. You need to perform that yourself. And them guys, about a week later, they took me over to the Good Beans Cafe down in Flint okay. and um, dropped me off on a Friday night. Wouldn't even come in. <laughs> it was like, go in there and do that poem for the crowd, see what they say. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history, man. Okay, so um, you said one of your topics was Chocolate Stars that people li liked, enjoyed. Right. Uh, let's talk about that song. Um, Chocolate Stars was a song that I, I created from like uh, all the African-American athletes and rappers and um, movie stars that you see getting into, getting into trouble with the law, you know, I know it's more than just African-Americans getting in trouble with the law, mm -hmm. but I chose to make a song about how, 
you know, the system is persecuting our chocolate stars, mm -hmm. you know? And the, the gut of the song tells them, you know, you wanna, you wanna um, persecute all the chocolate stars we gave you, mm -hmm. but I bet you ain't trying to hand back that money we made you. Right, okay. You know, and I just wanted to bring the light, bring to light to the people um, some of the tactics that, you know, business owners use, you know, you're all good while you're on the ball field, but you know, as soon as you mess up, your jersey coming off the shelf. You know right. what I'm saying? Okay, so basically, it sounds like the tone of, of some of your uh, spoken word is, is political. Is a lot of it political like that, or no, you... no, it's not political. Um, it's more real life issues and everyday life. You know, I don't talk about any gold chains, twenty inch rims. <laughs> I own none of those. I have none of that. Right. And. Um, where I live and my friends and the people that I surround myself with every day is basically a bunch of folks just trying to come up and come out of, mm -hmm. you know, a situation. And me as a fireman, um, I work inner city Flint. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see some of the most treacherous, you know, situations that you could ever see. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to look at music and hear see people talking about all the all they got and all their money and make it rain and all of this. I just decided to be one of the people that tell the other side of the story. Right, right. Now, I always touch on that topic with everybody. I, I had Fontaine on a, uh, one of my shows before, and we were talking about the same thing about the gold chains and everything. And <clears throat> I make it a point to talk about this because I believe it is really diluting um, the music industry, the entertainment industry, if you're, if you're talking about something that really, about greed and, and things like that. So um, how do you feel? And, and, is the influence of, of, of that type of music on, on today's children and everything? I, I really think that the music industry is it's like a new drug, you know? Mm -hmm. It takes our kids and misguides them, okay. you know? Because if you beat this message into these kids, mm -hmm. see, these kids are coming up trying to find themselves, mm -hmm. and they're trying to find a path to go on. And they look on this TV screen and they see the guy with the knot of money like this. You know what I mean? The big fat car. They don't see the path that got him there. Right. They just get the thirsting for that lifestyle, mm -hmm. thirsting for that money. And then they develop the by any means necessary attitude. Mm -hmm. And they either wind up dead or in jail. Right. And, and, and a lot, like I, I've noticed that, I've talked to a lot of rappers that talk about that subject content. Now, I'm not going to say, like I said, I always say I listen to that type of music. I enjoy the melodies and stuff like that or something. Thing. I don't agree with everything they say, but like I said, I watch movies with, with violence and stuff, and, and I don't get into it. But um, when you talk about things like that, about money, and this is what you need to do to be successful, a, a lot of people start That's just... That's just it, though. They show you the money. Mm -hmm. They show you the car. Mm -hmm. But they don't show you the recipe. Right, right. But what I'm saying is that when you, I, I've noticed a lot of people start disrespecting their parents and things like that because they don't have all that stuff. And their parents are, are, are trying to teach them values and stuff like that. And, it, and, and I, I feel that's a big problem in, in today's urban society is the upbringing. And people always say, well, it's the parents' fault. Well, it's, it, it's, it's a lot to do with the parents. But also, the media is portraying this image and promoting this image of, of you got to have rims and money and gold and all this stuff. And it, and it seems to be only the urban music. When I look at the other genres of music, I don't see that. I don't see them talking about uh, uh, gold chains and stuff. You might see a little bit, but not to that extent. But uh, that's just one topic. But let's get back a little bit into your um, album. Have you uh, dropped the album before this one? Yes, I had another album um, that... I just released locally. Um, it was called From Mississippi to Michigan. And uh, Spoken Wordplay was actually the name of the album. It was Spoken Wordplay from Mississippi to Michigan. Every album I put out is from Mississippi to Michigan. Okay. I had Spoken Wordplay from Mississippi to Michigan. Now this is Cornbread and Barbecue Smoke mm -hmm. from Mississippi to Michigan, which I call My Journey, which is yet to be over. All right. And I know you're going to perform a song uh, next. Uh, we're going to wrap it up and go to break. I'm going to let you go to the break. Uh, let's talk about what you're about to perform. This song, uh, Cornbread and Kool-Aid, is basically an introduction to me, you know, letting you know who I am, where I'm from, and how I actually got 
to Flint, Michigan. Okay. And that's it. And um, we are about to uh, wrap it up and go to a break and show you what he does on the stage worldwide, right here on the Jack Frost Show. <laughs> 